sitekyogi.org. Loft et al. 1987, some facts about weapons focus. Background. This is the second study we'll be looking at from the interview and witnesses section of Making Case as part of your A2 psychology exam. It is further categorised into factors affecting reconstruction. Weapons focus refers to the concentration of crimes witnesses' attention on a weapon and the resulting reduction in ability to remember other details about the crime. So when a weapon is present, the people tend to focus on the weapon. Oh, it's a gun. They're looking at that as opposed to looking at the person's face. When a weapon such as a gun is present during a crime, witness recall of the offender is slightly reduced. The reason behind this is that the witnesses tend to focus on the weapon, not the offender. This is due to attentional narrowing, which Loftus believed is present due to evolution. Aim, to provide some support for the weapon's focus effect, which affects witnesses during crimes where a weapon is present. Design, laboratory experiment. Participants, for experiment one, there were 36 students from the University of Lof Washington where Loftus is a professor. All the students were aged between 18 and 31. 13 participants were psychology students participating in exchange for extra credit in their psychology class. The remaining 23 were recruited through an advert and were paid $3.50 for their participation in the experiment. Experiment 2 had 80 students from the University of Washington. Procedure Experiment 1 In Experiment 1, Loftus et al. used two sets of 35mm slides. Each set contained 18 slides. Both series showed a group of people moving through a queue in a Taco Time restaurant. There were two conditions, both the control and the experimental. Person B was the second person in the queue, and acted differently in both conditions, and was thus the independent variable. In the experimental condition, person B pulled out a gun. In the control condition, person B handed a, the cashier a check. Apart from the differences in person B, all the other slides were exactly the same in both conditions. Each slide was shown for 1.5 seconds. The participants were told that the study was aiming to study proactive interference. After watching the slides, the participants were given a 20 item multiple choice questionnaire. The participants were also given a lineup of 12 photos of people's heads. They were then asked to rate on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 to 6, 1 being a guess and 6 being very sure of how confident they were of their identification of person B. Eye movements were measured using a corneal reflection device. Loftus et al. then replicated the experiment with 80 students and achieved the same results. Results. Participants' answers on the questionnaires were not significantly different between both conditions. Loftus calculated that 8.5 of the results were due to chance. In the control condition without the gun, 38 Point nine people, seven people, identified the correct person B, whereas only eleven point one people, two people, identified the correct person B in the experimental condition with the gun. There was no difference between the self-reported levels of confidence reported by the two groups. Eye measurements showed, on average, that people in the experimental condition spent in their 3.72 seconds looking at the gun whereas the people in the control condition spent an average of just 2.44 seconds looking at the check. Conclusions As expected, the participants spent longer looking at the weapon when one was present. As a result, the participants in the experimental condition experienced greater difficulty when trying to identify person B. Loftus et al. concluded that weapons focus would be, larger, would be a larger factor in real life, as a witness would be more aroused and is therefore likely to have increased intentional narrowing. Evaluation. Remember, this is not an exhaustive list. Because it's a laboratory experiment and it was highly controlled, we can say that it's, the results are quite valid. We can also say that it's highly reliable. As the experiment has been replicated and Loftus herself replicated it with similar results. It was highly standardised. Each slide was shown for exactly 1.5 seconds 
This helps with the replicability again. A weakness is the demand characteristics. As the students will either pay $3.5 or will give an extra credit for their participation, they may have felt the need to act in a way in which the experimenter would want. Arguably, this study is low in ecological validity. Despite having concluded that weapons focus would be heightened in real life, no attempt to, was made to make the experiment true to life. Thus, we cannot say whether the results really would be generalizable to real life. Ethnocentrism is present because the study only focused on students from Washington University. If you've enjoyed this Psych Yogi presentation, why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos?